Welcome to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and today we're going to be talking about social media in healthcare. And I'm joined by Mona Chattel and Rebecca Darmot. So welcome both of you. Thank Thanks, you. Man. And then so maybe before we get started, um, I'll let each of you introduce yourselves. So maybe start with Mona and then we'll go with Rebecca. I'm Mona Chattel. I am a professor, endowed chair, and department chair at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, the College of Nursing. I'm also the editor of the Journal of Psychosocial Nursing and Mental Health Services. Great. And Rebecca? Yes, I am Rebecca Darmok, and I'm a marketing strategist for a technology consulting company. And for about 10 years before that, I was director of marketing and communications for an academic health system in Chicago. So let's talk a little bit now about how each of you got into social media. Thanks, Melissa. So uh, my name is Mona Chattel, and I uh, got into social media um, about 10 or 12 years ago when I did a a, a fellowship with the op-ed project. Uh, I was a faculty member at the time at DePaul University, and um, the op-ed project came and did a workshop and it was actually a fellowship program, six months. And I learned how to write op-eds, how to use social media, how to write blogs, really how to talk to the public. You know, we as scientists and as healthcare providers, uh, we're used to, um, and as academics, we're used to talking to each other and writing academic papers, but we were not so good at using everyday language. So this um, project taught me how to speak to the public and social media was a huge part of that. And that's when I started Twitter and um, it just started there and I've been using it ever since. Rebecca, how did you get into it? Well, as a marketing professional, I needed to get into it for my job. So of course I had my own personal accounts, Um, but again, I've been in marketing for 20 years and when social media came around, it's just something I needed to learn how to do. And working social media from a professional angle is totally different than doing it from a personal angle. Um, So it's, it, again, it's just been a learning experience. Um, There's so many social media platforms out there, some that have are uh, come and gone and some new ones out there. And so it's, it's always just a constant um, learning experience on how to best utilize social media for uh, your profession. So now let's talk about why it's important for healthcare professionals to use social media. And maybe we could start with you, Rebecca, this time. Sure. I'm, I think a lot of healthcare professionals want to be on social media. They might just not know why or how to get started, but there's so many things you can do on social media. You can use it uh, for networking opportunities. You can use it to um, share information with your colleagues because your colleagues are definitely on social media, no matter what your specialty area is, they're on there talking about um, uh, different healthcare topics. You can use it to expand your practice if that's something you want to do. You can use it to to disseminate research um, and really also get information out there to the public. Um, You are experts in your area of specialty, and there's a lot of misinformation um, that's being spread on social media, uh, but the public and even reporters trust healthcare professionals uh, to give the most accurate information. So really it's an opportunity for you to go outside of your practice and outside of the walls of your individual institution and reach um, so many more people on an exponential level. Yeah, I I totally agree, Rebecca. Also, uh, in in these healthcare training programs and in uh, in our institute institutions of higher education, we don't we don't really teach students how to use social media. What what we what they hear is uh, what they shouldn't do, what you shouldn't post. And then when they're in the working world, um, hospitals and healthcare systems are always cautioning people, telling their employees and their providers. what not to do again. So people hear, oh, don't do this, don't do that. Don't post pictures, of course, don't get into um, patient provider relationships, you know, via social media. But people are really left with lots of questions. Like, this is a big deal. I know it's a big deal, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get started. So we, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was gonna gonna say, so speaking of that, I mean, I think that a lot that um, different providers are at different levels. And so, you know, maybe talk to me about some different ways. 
to think about how to engage with social media, depending on what level you're at. And Mona, you can probably just finish that thought for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, we always, we, we think about this as a developmental process. And first people consume and they, they read, they, they scroll through, say we're talking about Twitter, and, you know, they start following people. So they're a consumer, they consume social media. And then the next stage is to contribute. So they may like or retweet. And then finally, a more advanced level is creating. So you're creating your own content on social media. And really, when you first start out, don't don't worry about creating, just just start by consuming, just just see what people are writing about, connect with others, uh, and just take it all in. I don't know, Rebecca, what, what do you? Yeah, I agree. It can be overwhelming at first to start up on a new social media platform. So just getting comfortable with how to use it. And also, again, just following, looking up people's names of people that you know in your um, own area of specialty, follow them, see what they're doing on there, see how, what they're posting about. Um, and again, just getting used to the platform is the most important step to, to beginning your journey. Right. And then once you're comfortable with that, if you're comfortable being a consumer, then you can move into being a contributor, which is when, you know, you see something that someone says and you can like, you know, in the case of Twitter, you can retweet it and add a comment. And that way you're contributing to the conversation and then moving into kind of the, the top level of like actually creating content, you know, from scratch. Right. So. And that is the goal to be, I mean, it's not called social for, for nothing really. So it is about engaging with people, um, but, but don't, don't be afraid to just start out by consuming before you, you move to contribute and create. Yeah. yeah. And with create, the create, the goal is really to become, you know, a thought leader. You are a thought leader. So create just means putting your specialized knowledge and expertise out there for, um, again, your specific audience based on what your goals are. And you, um, so I would just say, Rebecca, you know, because you are kind of our branding expert here. Um, do you have any suggestions to like kind of quick tips for how to help people if they are getting started to kind of brand themselves uh, professionally? Yeah, I think the most important thing that, and we always say this to people is um, you are a brand. Um, so use your name. Um, if for when you're signing up for social media, you have to pick a username and you should use your first and last name so people can find you. Um, you don't want to use any kind of slang terms or phrases. Um, you want to be as professional as possible um, if you're on social media to um, help with your professionalism. Um, so that's number one. And number two is definitely um, don't be afraid to um, highlight all of the accolades and things that you've done in your profile. Um, brag on yourself. Um, it's, it's not going to help you to not say everything you're an expert in or all of your accomplishments. I mean, that's how people know you're an expert when they can see what you've done. Um, and they see all the experience that you have. So it's definitely good to not be afraid to put it out there. Um, it's how people are going to learn to trust you and trust what you have to say on social media. Okay. Anything to add to that, Mona? Uh, just, um, you know, some, some people are afraid of, of self-promotion, um, but we don't, we don't think that that's really uh, a bad word, uh, but also know that with social media, you know, some of it's self-promotion, but a lot of it is um, to use um, the op-ed project, shining the light on others. So a lot of it is really sharing the great things that other, other people are doing. So it's not, it's not just see what I did or who I am. It's look at what these wonderful things are that other people are doing and sharing and connecting. Right. So that makes me think of kind of the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your time is spent promoting other people and then 20% can be kind of um, you That's right, Melissa. adding your That's voice. Right. That's right. <laughs> Right. So the three of us got connected, you know, probably a couple years ago at the Institute for Nursing Leadership. It was a conference that Mona and I were both asked to talk about kind of how to use social media um, as a as a healthcare professional. We looked at the presentations that we've been doing. They were pretty similar. And we were like, man, we should write a book about this. Mona's like, hey, I think I know a way to do that. And then connected um, me to Rebecca. So I did not know Rebecca prior to this. And so the three of us um, did release a book a couple of weeks ago called 
Social Media and Healthcare, and it's a guide to helping professionals develop their online professional presence. And so I appreciate the two of you being with me today to talk about some of these tips and tricks um, for how to do that. Um, our book, um, you can order it through um, the publisher, which is Slack Incorporated, or you can get it on Amazon.com. But again, it's Social Media and Healthcare, and it's written by Mona Chattel, Melissa Bachelor, and Rebecca Darmok. So any final words um, before we go? Close out the day? Always happy to talk about social media for healthcare professionals. So thanks for having me. Thanks for, for having us. Yeah, topic. thanks for having me. And, and we hope all of you uh, join on Twitter, look up our names and um, follow us and we'll follow you back. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Um, don't you guys have a new website? Maybe you want to give a shout out um, to that? Yes, we do have a website. It is influence-rx.com, where you can find different tips um, on social media and a little bit more information. Okay, and it's, by the way, perfectly branded for the cover of the book. <laughs> so people will have to check out uh, your book signing or your book promo party that you guys had this past weekend. So we'll yes. put a picture of that up and we'll put links to the book um, in Amazon right. and both at the publisher Um either below here if you're watching on YouTube or it will be on my website, melissabphd.com, um, attached to this episode. So thank you ladies for being here today. This was fun. Thank you. Great awesome. team of both. Thank you for tuning in to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor. And if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my other episodes on my YouTube channel by either by subscribing and ringing the bell to get immediate notifications when new content comes out. In addition, you can also find the audio version of the podcast on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Please feel free to leave an honest review because more reviews mean more awareness of the podcast and helps us move towards an age-friendly world. If you have a comment or a question, you can visit my website, melissabphd.com. Go to the Contact Melissa tab, and you can leave me a voice message. You never know. It might just include your question or your comment in an upcoming episode.